what we were wondering about the Shamish, uh, the Gemara seems to be a little vague about the Shamish Mitzarfon. The Shamish is the waiter. He can join the people together of two different groups because he is serving the food of these two different groups. It's almost like they are, it's almost like they are one group. And um, I mentioned that, you know, it is interesting that he doesn't have to eat even a kazayas. He doesn't have to eat any bread or anything. Somehow the fact that he's servicing them makes them into one uh, party, makes it, turns it into one party. So I said, according to that, maybe it should work even if he's not Jewish. Because, you know, the fact is, that, you know, it's sort of like, almost like if it's in the same room, you know, the room is joining them together. Here it's the same uh you know, same waiter, the waiter is, going. does he have to be Jewish? Does it have to be a man? Could it be a woman? Could it be a child? So turns out, I just, um, I, I looked into it and um, the, uh, there's uh, two svarim that bring, that bring up this question, at least two, two books. One is called, one is the Eishel Avraham. The other one is called the Binyan Shloima. And they question this, they ask this same question. They say it's a suffolk gadol, a big question. If it works for a, uh, can a woman, a child, or a non-Jew join the uh, join the um, the the different uh, groups into one? So it's it it is discussed. It's not uh, it, it's uh, it's not automatically uh, unacceptable, and uh, so. You know they 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 question this and they uh, they leave it off as a question. It's it's a little unclear if it actually uh, could work. Um, but you basically see that there is such a concept that the shamish can join the people together and join these meals together and and uh, allow different groups to make to be considered to be considered one group. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to uh, mention is that our Gemara uh, deals with the laws of Metilas Yodayim, washing, washing one's hands, which we learned Rashi is understanding our Gemara to mean talking about washing one's hands for bread. So the law of washing one's hands for bread has to do with a rabbinic decree that the hands, uh, if they're not washed, they are tame, and they could uh, cause the truma, which was this uh, holy food that was eaten by the koyhain, uh, this could be considered tame, and it would be a prohibition of eating tame truma, and therefore, the rabbis established a rule that everyone should wash their hands before eating bread. Bread was the staple food that truma was made that was made into, because truma uh, was generally grain, and the grain was made into bread. And so the rabbis made a blanket rule. They said even if you're not a kohen, uh, everyone should wash their hands before eating bread. And that's why. Uh, we all, uh, even, uh, you know, at, at a, uh, even during the week, not just Shabbos, you know, whenever we have bread, we, uh, we wash our hands. Many people have a tradition to wash the right hand twice and the left hand twice. Others including uh, follow a more strict rule that it's supposed to be three times on the right hand and three times on the left hand. And, uh, but basically this has to do with the decree of uh, washing one's hands for bread and having to do with be, be making the bread, not, tr not making the bread tummy. And that could have implications of uh, uh, possibly people, you know, if we wouldn't do this, it could cause someone to make the truma tummy and they would end up eating it, eating tummy truma and so on. And, uh, and therefore, uh, there is this decree. So the question that Argamar is dealing with is, can you use wine to wash your hands for this, to fulfill this 
uh, mitzvah of netilas yadayim, this commandment of washing one's hands, you know, to what extent, uh, how lenient can you be? What, what can be used for the water? And there's a whole chapter in the code of law, what water is acceptable to be used. Um, and they even talk about, uh, let's say, the hot springs of uh, Tiberia in Tiberias. They have these hot springs. Would you be allowed to use that water? for an etilas yodayim, for washing your hands? Can you use water that you wash dishes with? Can that water be used for an etilas yodayim, for washing your hands before bread? And you have to also understand, keep in mind, that nowadays we have uh, faucets, but if you think about how it was in the olden days, it wasn't always easy to go get clean water. And uh, obviously the question of what water could be used was ex extremely uh, practical uh, question in the olden days. Now it's a less practical because um, who cares? You can't use uh, you know you, you you can't use water that you wash dishes with. Uh, so um, you just turn the faucet on and use new water. You know, uh, but um, but th this is uh, this is a whole chapter in the Code of Law, chapter one hundred and sixty that deals with um, uh, the water that could be used. So our Gemara talks about wine that you're uh, using, either it's undiluted or, it, or it's diluted. And our Gemara is dealing with the bracha on the wine as well. What bracha would you make on wine that's undiluted or water the wine that is diluted? Again, in the olden days, the wine was very strong, especially the Eretz Yisrael wine was very strong. And uh, they... Uh, diluted it. So if you could you wash your hands with the undiluted wine or could you wash your hands with the diluted wine? And again, we're dealing with, according to Rashi, the washing of one's hands for, for bread. Now, uh, keep in mind that one of the questions on this Gemara is that there is a source in another Gemara that says that wine that has a uh, discoloration, that water, excuse me, water that has a discoloration cannot be used for an etilas yodayim. So, so the, question, the question is, um, how can you reconcile that with using fruit juice or grape juice? It definitely does not have the appearance of water. Using wine for an etilas yodayim you know, even water that has a bad appearance, for example, uh, let's say ink spilled in the water. Okay, so it's water, has some ink, it, it, it's discolored, maybe even a small amount of ink, not a huge amount, but it's got discolored. So uh, if that can't be used for an etilas yodayim, how could our Gemara deal with uh, grape juice that for sure does not, it's, it's very discolored water. Right, so that is a question that is dealt with by the commentaries to the extent that one of the commentaries has to say that our Gemara cannot be talking about washing your hands for nitilas yodayim for bread. Can't be. Because if it's talking about washing your hands for bread, you for sure can't use grape juice, diluted or undiluted. You can't use grape juice. Why can't you use grape juice? Because it's for sure discolored. And therefore, that commentary, the Raivet, he says our Gemara has to be talking about washing your hands for cleanliness. You want to wash them for davening, wash them for, for mayim achreinim at the end of the meal. You want to wash, you want to wash them. You want to wash them for after the meal. But however it is, the, 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 uh, the washing of the hands that is done um, for bread has to be water, according to this opinion. And uh, the other opinions have to find an answer to reconcile that contradiction between the Gemara that talks about the appearance of water and how could, how could a, um, a fruit juice be allowed. And uh, in order to answer that, you have to say something to the effect of that water that's discolored means that you initially had water and the water got ruined. But if you start off with fruit juice, 
Fruit juice is not ruined. If it got ruined is one thing. If it got discolored is a problem. But this is the natural state of fruit juice, which has the rule, it falls into the category of a liquid that's like water. So in other words, as long as it's not discolored, then it's fine. So in other words, uh, the Gemara there doesn't mean to exclude fruit juices from washing one's hands. For Natilas Yadayim, you could, you could explain that. It just means anything discolored from its natural state is excluded from Natilas Yadayim. So these are the two ways of learning the Gemara over there that it shouldn't contradict our Gemara. Either you want to say that our Gemara is not talking about washing for, it's not talking about washing for bread. That's one way of reconciling it. Our Gemara is talking about washing your hands for cleanliness, for prayer, for um, after the meal, before you're benching, you're washing your hands for cleanliness. Or you could say that it has to do with the natural state of um, of, uh, of how the, uh, how your, um, uh, of the water or the liquid, that it should not, should not be ruined. It shouldn't be discolored from its natural state. And as long as it's in its natural state, even grape juice would be acceptable, uh, you know, for washing one's hands uh, for Natilis Yadayim. And based on the different opinions here, if it's undiluted, you know, and, but, it, 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 but if it's considered wine, then it could be problematic because wine is not called water. It has to be water. Now, fruit juice could be considered water, the, what do you mean, the discoloration? The answer is no, it's in its natural state. It didn't get discolored from its natural state. So these are the, uh, the, 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 the different ways that the commentaries are dealing with our Gemara. Now, in Rabbi, addition, yes. what about white wine that doesn't discolor the water? Yeah, so there is an opinion about white wine that that would be a way of reconciling it. I think it's the Mordechai that wants to explain it that way, that there's a difference between if it's white wine or if it's uh, other wine. But uh, the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Alter Rebbe uh, says it doesn't matter, even if it's white. In other words, he doesn't want to follow that leniency. Um, let me read it for you. Uh, it, it, he has it in parentheses in chapter 160, uh, uh, paragraph 15. The Alter Rebbe says, even Yayin Lovan, even white wine that seems similar to water, and uh, he says, um, 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 Mikol Makam, nevertheless, um, um, im koshken al if they were worried about the, the, the appearance of the water, how much more so were they worried about the water itself that it should be water? So according to that view that, that you need water, white wine won't work. White wine doesn't help. But that is, there is such a view like that, and it, it is brought in the regular shofar. Now, the Alter Rebbe seems to, doesn't want to follow it and puts it in parentheses, at least, uh, which sometimes means, the, or generally means the Alter Rebbe is, it has a sort of like a question about it, so he puts it in parentheses. But in his parentheses, he writes it's not acceptable, um, according to that view. But the uh, in the regular shofar, um, the Ramah adds in, in, cha- in uh, the same chapter, but a different uh, paragraph, paragraph 12, the Ramah adds, some say that only white wine could be used, but red wine not. Um, so uh, in the parentheses, he talks about uh, snow, hail, frost, and um, if you uh, squeezed it till it becomes water, uh, you could use it for natilas um, yudayim. Some say it needs to be water itself, and some say wine is kosher for natilas yudayim. Whether you um, whether you added water or whether you didn't add water in it but it's not proper to do it, preferably in order not to degrade something that is significant. In other words, that has changed and has a special bracha for itself. And uh, therefore... um, They don't mention tal. Yeah, interesting. It doesn't say tal, huh?
It doesn't have to be squeezed. It's right there, ready. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. That is interesting that it doesn't. I, I mean, I didn't. I didn't go through the whole chapter, so I don't know if it says somewhere else. But you're right. It, it would seemingly fit right there. It should say tal. Um. In any event, uh, so it is broad over here about the white wine. Maybe it's not practical to collect an entire cup full of tal of dew. Mm. Yeah, it could be, could be, could be. It's, it's a hard thing to do. Um, Rashi talks about it in Chumash, about, uh, he says, you'll see, if you want to see, he says, you want to do an experiment, you could make two holes in a egg shell and blow out the egg from, uh, and then put in dew and see that it'll actually rise into the atmosphere. If you yeah. fill up an eggshell with dew, the, the, the Rashi and Chumash, he brings this experiment that you'll see that the dew actually rises into the atmosphere. So he does give an example that you could uh, gather dew to the extent that you'd fill a um, you'd fill an eggshell. But I guess you're right to fill a cup would be a lot more than just an eggshell. Uh, if you want to uh, you know wash both your hands. Um, a revius is an egg and a half. So it's it's uh, even if you use the minimum amount of water, it's more than an eggshell. It's, uh, it's uh, an eggshell plus a half. Uh, so yeah, plus so. Yeah, I, I, a good good point of it. maybe that's why it doesn't mention it. It's, it's probably not so easy, even though the even though Rashi gives an example, it doesn't mean it's so easy to do either. It's for for a scientist, maybe they, they'll they'll spend their day doing this to just to do the science. But um, you know, maybe maybe that's a a good reason. Rab, Rabbi, I don't know if he answered this before. Does the water have to be drinkable, even so, though it's not this color? This color, let's say it's you know. Yeah. So 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 the example. Yeah, the example of the Chamei Tveria was the reason why they said, why it's in Shulchan Aruch mentions it's not acceptable is because it's, it's too bitter to drink. So, um, so one second, let me just make sure I'm telling you the right thing. Chamei Tveria. Maybe because it's not pure water, it has something in it. Chemical. So, so you're you're not allowed to um, to pour it. You wouldn't be able to pour it on your hands, even if it cools down, because it's not fit for a dog to drink. Now, you would be allowed. Um, you would be allowed to dip your hands in it, like a uh, as we called tevila which is tiveling, the dunking your hands in it, that would be acceptable because uh, you know, that has a, a different rule. But uh, it's considered a, a mayon, a wellspring, a spring. And, um, and, and that has other rules. But regarding washing one's hands, that would be a problem. And um, now if you did find hot water, that was a spring that are fit to drink, you could use it for Natilas Yodayim. So that's... Uh, if they would be fit for, for a dog to drink, that would be okay, acceptable. So um, what was it? It was snow, uh, hail, and what was the third one? Frost. Frost. There's the two. It actually uses kfar and glid. Kfar. Kfar means frost. And yeah. glid means uh, water that freezes from, from the cold. That's glid. Um, maybe icicles. I don't know. Maybe that's what I mean. Maybe frozen dew. <laughs> frozen tau. I see you're big into the tal. Yeah. Maybe it had tal. Tal loy miyatsu. There's holy things water. about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Um, uh, in any event, uh, so these are the so these these are the practical laws. So the Gemara that we're learning, as unpractical as it seemed, um, you know, we seem to be uh, just uh, you know dealing with these Zimun issues, which maybe are not so uh, don't seem to be so regular issues. The truth is, they do happen. You're in a restaurant. We were dealing with dealing with the issues of restaurant, dealing with issues of um, my of washing one's hands. What is acceptable to wash to wash one's hands? And uh, Argamar is dealing with two issues here. One is the uh, use what can be used to wash your hands to to be a kosher washing. But in that law itself, there's another issue, and that is. Would you be allowed to ruin food to benefit your washing of your hands? So in other words, it, 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 it's really a double um, complication here. There's, there's two challenges that you're dealing with. One is what is allowed to be used, considered, be considered water or a liquid. And the other is, are you allowed to ruin food for the purpose of washing your hands? And these are the two issues that we are uh, we are touching upon in our Gemara. Rabbi, in the dictionary, it says glid is is ice. Okay, I, well, I said icicle. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So. Um, So, so let's uh, do our, let's go back to our uh, Gemara here. And um, what, what and, page? Uh, we're on page 50B. Okay. And we're going to put the Shulchan side over here. Okay. So, uh, so we're dealing with this, uh, these laws of washing one's hands. I do also want to just make mention of, two, of, of, of one law that really can be divided into two. And that is that when we talk about degrading or dishonoring food, there's two parts to that. One, of, one part is uh, ruining the food. And the other is just using food for a purpose that's not eating. So that would be you know, you could divide it into two things. One is the dishonoring or dis, dis, disrespecting the food that God blessed us with is part of the blessing of Hashem. And um, I don't know what a better word, degrading the food. The, the, and and uh, the other would be ruining the food that it actually is not going to be able to be used for. And the difference between the two would be uh, when you wash your hands with wine, you are not going to be able to drink that wine afterwards. No one wants to drink it after you wash your hands with it. Um, so that's ruining it. But when you uh, use your uh, bread as a book holder and you put your book on top of the bread in order to lift up your, your, your book, so there you're able to use the, uh, the bread afterwards. You're just using it for a purpose that's not, um, that's not um, uh, um, uh, using it for a purpose that's not food. But it's not degrade. But it's not. Um, it's not ruining it that it won't be able to be eaten. It will be able to be eaten afterwards. So these are the the two issues that we are gonna see. Uh, you know that sometimes they that there is a difference between the two. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, start over here in the Gemara again with um, the Tanara Banan, which is um, twelve lines from the top of the page on fifty B. Tana Rabbanan, the rabbis learned, Yayin, wine, Ad Shalei Nasan Laseichei Mayim, until you add water to it, Eim Avarchen Olav Barpriya Gofen, you don't recite the bracha Barpriya Gofen, Elav Barpriya Eitz, you only say the bracha Barpriya Eitz. And, of course, it has to do with the fact that the wine is very strong, and you didn't add water, it's not fit to drink, and um, it hasn't changed for the good yet, and it doesn't, the bracha does not change. Uh, and it is like uh, grapes that the bracha would be, it hasn't changed for the better yet. 
and um, you could wash your hands with it for al natilas yodayim. And the simple understanding is it's considered like water. It has a law of water. And we the, the, the issue that we dealt with was that it's, what do you mean? It's discolored. It has a discoloration. And the answer that we're going to uh, follow is it, it's in its natural state. So it's not called discolored. And it would be acceptable to use for natilas yodayim. When you add water to it, then then you can say it has changed now for the better. Now it's real wine. And you cannot wash your hands with it anymore because now it's not water anymore. Now it's called wine. These are the words of Rabbi Eliezer. So we have uh, the uh, opinion of Rabbi Eliezer, which... Um, we saw already in the Mishnah, because Rabbi Eliezer in the Mishnah said, uh, you have to add water in order to make it wine, in order to say Bar Piyagafen. Our Mishnah uh, seemingly had to do with the fact that we're dealing with Berchas Zimon, talking about doing the, the Zimon, and the Zimon, the preferable way to do it is with a, a cup of wine. And so Rabbi Eliezer states over here that you got to add water to it in order for it to be wine. Our Brisa, our Gemara adds a Brisa, and the Brisa talks about not only about a bracha of, of the Bar Piyagafen, but the Braiso adds in this idea about the Nitilas Yodayim, washing hands. And these are a new, a new law that we're adding to the equation. And what do we see from Rabbi Eliezer? Are you allowed to use wine and ruin wine? Ruin, uh, ruin uh, um, liquid uh, ruin these dri these these uh, drinks for purpose of netilas yodayim. So, uh, what it seems from him is it's not a problem. You're you're not only you're using the food not for drinking purposes, but you're using it for in a way that it ruins it. So he seems to be holding that it's fine. Now he does say that once it's wine, you can't do it. Why can't you do it once it's wine? So he says the reason you can't do it once it's wine is because uh, it, it's not kosher for washing one's hands. But the issue is not an issue of ruining food. So that's what it seems like from Rabbi Eliezer. Again, we're trying to go a little deeper into the Gemara so that we understand where the halacha Come, you know, how this plays itself out in Jewish law. If you wanted to just fly through the Gemara, you could just, you know, read it that it's uh, it's not acceptable to use this for Nitilas Yadayim. But if you want to understand each each detail, so the uh, you have to go through each point. And so the point that we're dealing with is, is this considered um, uh, permissive? Does this show anything? Does this show any laws about ruining food? What does this tell us about ruining food? So what we're seeing from Rabbi Eliezer is you're allowed to ruin the food. Now, how, how would you answer if I asked you a question? Um, isn't there a law, Baal Tashchis, you're not allowed to ruin things, wasting things? How would you be allowed to use this for washing your hands when you're ruining? Does, doesn't it fall into the category of wasting and cutting down a fruit tree is prohibited? You're not allowed to ruin things. The Torah does not allow us to ruin things. So how would you think Rabbi Eliezer is going to allow you to ruin this wine or these fruit juices or whatever you're using? How would, how would they allow this? How would Rabbi Eliezer allow this? It's, it's part of a, a, a taking precious things and ruining them. But it's for a mitzvah. So... The so what Ben is saying, uh, you're, you're actually uh, giving a very uh, uh, powerful answer. You're, you're, you're saying it's a mitzvah, one of the commandments of the rabbis is to wash for bread, yeah. But that's that's a very good answer, but I would say it's even too good because I would take it one <laughs> step less. Not only does it not, it doesn't need it's a mitzvah, but it doesn't even need to be a mitzvah. You are using the grape juice that you squeezed, you're using this and that you made into wine, but it's not, it's not yet full-fledged wine. 
you're using it for a purpose. Let's not even go to the extreme of a mitzvah. You are benefiting from it. And I'll give you an example. If you have a fruit tree that is blocking your house, it's right next to your house, and you need to add a room into your house. According to the letter of the law, you should be allowed to cut down the fruit tree. Really? Cut down a fruit tree? You're not allowed to cut down a fruit tree according to Jewish law. The answer is, I'm not allowed to cut down a fruit tree because in a destructive way. But this is not a destructive way. I'm adding to livable space in my house. That's not destructive. I'm, I'm benefiting in a tremendous way. Otherwise, I have to buy a house for a, a $500,000 if I don't cut this fruit tree down. So I'm benefiting in a, in, in a real way by cutting the fruit tree. Now, I'm not giving you any halachic advice because there are complications with cutting down fruit trees, even if you do want to add on to your house. So I'm not talking from a halachic perspective, but I'm talking about from the letter of the law, uh, just, just, just you know, straight rule, straight law, it would seem to be permissible. Um, such a thing, not only permissible, that's fine because that's not called destructive. You're not being destructive. So here also, you're, you're, you're uh, using this wine that's undiluted and you're washing your hands with it in order to have a meal. That is not called destroying something because you're, you're not just spilling it out. You're using it in order to, to, to have your meal. So you're, so you're, you're, um, you're, you know, it's considered, it's, it's considered acceptable. Now, if you, you could ask me a question, and I don't know the answer to this. What happens if this wine is a hundred and fifty dollar wine? If this wine would be a hundred, this wine is aged for twelve years, and uh, you know it's it's very expensive wine, and you want to use it for uh, to wash your hands for for uh, for some bread. Would you still say that that's not called baltashlis? Is that not called destructive? You're spending 150 bucks on uh, on washing your hands, uh, so that would be uh, something that we would have to look into. I, I am not sure the answer to that question. That would be uh, an interesting thing because that seemingly could be considered uh, destructive. I mean, that's wasteful. That's like using a uh, a stamp that's. Uh, that's an old stamp, an antique stamp, and you're using it to mail a letter, you know, or, or buying something from the store with an old coin that has tremendous value. That seemingly would be baltashness. That would seemingly maybe be prohibited. I would guess that that would be a problem. Here we're talking about regular wine that you just made into wine, and it's not of, in, you know, of huge value. And so you're washing your hands with it. That would seemingly be fine. It's not an issue of baltashlis, of being destructive. You're benefiting from it. And that's the way Rabbi Eliezer, at least, sees this law. The only issue is, really, is it acceptable for use according to the laws of netilas yodayim, of washing your hands? It has to be done with water. Is this called water? Can it be considered water? Well, until it's until it's made into wine, he says it's considered water, and it's not wine until you add you add. Some would you dilute it? So until it's diluted, it's considered water. You can use it for an atilas yodayim. Once you dilute it, it's not called water anymore. It's called wine. And therefore, it would be a problem. Again, this is in the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. And uh, that's just giving us a little understanding now of, um, of his view. Yes, Ben. I wanted to say, as far as wine, I, I don't know if you can use that baltashkid because some people can afford it. It's, it's nothing to them. But, uh, but as far as the trees, I thought the trees originally, they were talking about people going to war, not to cut down fruit trees. So that, that is the example, but that doesn't, that, that, that law applies in all scenarios. Okay. So that, that term, if you ever hear the term Balkashkes, yeah, it's taken from that law. Okay. The, the because I, I remember it was about yeah. the war. Yeah, yeah. It's taken from those words. It says, Lois Ashkes, do not yeah. destroy. So we use that. We, 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 that, that, that law applies in all, in all scenarios. Uh, yes, David. The, uh, this idea of using something that's very expensive and it's yeah. Baltashkes because, yeah. uh, okay. So I, I thought immediately of that we had learned about 
uh, the rabbi that freed his servant, mm. and uh, which is a tremendous financial loss in order to make a minion or to make a mizuman. Right. So there you could say the, the, the mitzvah, a mitzvah has beyond value. There you could say a mitzvah is beyond value. Here, the question is, can you really say that this is a mitzvah that you need because you don't have to eat now? You know, eating now, is it worth it? Is it really something you need? You're going to spend $150 to go eat? Once you eat, you need to bench. That's a mitzvah to bench. But to wash your hands to eat a meal, I don't know if you could say that that's the same as, as, a, as, a, as, as freeing your slave to make a minion. Freeing your slave to make a minion, that's an obligation mitzvah that you have on you. Right? You have a mitzvah to dominate the minion. And you have the ability to make it. And however, when it comes to eating, you know, I don't know that you would say, well, mitzvah is beyond value. I should uh, wash, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, wash with this uh, $150 wine in order to uh, be able to, um, in order to be able to eat this meal. You, you get what I'm saying? It's, it's not, it, it doesn't fall into the same category of, um, at least I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it that way. Um, uh, I don't know if it's discussed in the Shulchan Aruch. Or, it, it would be you know, em embarrassing. It, it would be embarrassing if you are eating with other people and not eating. <laughs> eating with other people and yeah, and if you're what? gonna sit with other people and eat and you and you didn't wash, you can't eat. Uh huh. So I guess it would depend. I'll give you an example. Um, when it comes to a fruit tree, uh, so. There is a rule, like how much fruit does it need to produce in order for it to be prohibited to cut down? What does that mean? That you have to evaluate the amount of work that you put into keeping the tree alive versus how much it, 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 uh, it produces. So like there's a, there's a number called the reiva hakav, it's a, a quarter of a kav. It has to produce that amount of olives in order for it to be considered a worthwhile tree to keep. So it's, it's all based on value. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a scale. What, what overrides what? Is it worth keeping the tree alive in working? You have to work, uh, you know, 25 days of the year, watering it and pruning it and this and that versus how much produce it's going to it's going to give off and if it's if it's worth it then it's called baltashkes if you if you destroy it if it's not worth the amount of work you're putting into it so that means that it's not destructive by destroying it you're not being destructive because uh, this is this is not a tree of value that you're destroying. On the contrary, you're wasting your time working for a small amount of olives that are coming out of this tree. You know, so, so it, 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 it does boil down to a calculation of what, you know, what is worth more. Is this worth more than that or is that worth more than this? So in, in Ben's case, if you're going to sit there without, is it worth it for you to eat a meal with others to spend $150 to be able to eat with them? You know what I mean? I don't know. Is that, you know, if it's an embarrassment, it's worth it to spend, you know, to, 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 to wash on, on, on wine, is that, is, it, that would, you know, seemingly be part of this equation. Okay, so the bottom line is that Argomar is dealing with wine, whatever, that you're washing with, and Rabbi Eliezer seems to not have a problem with using this excuse that it is not a problem. It's not called baltashkes. Again, we're, we're, we're covering ourselves uh, for numerous halachic issues. Is it baltashkes? So we said not, according to Rabbi Eliezer, it's not because um, he's using it for a purpose. Is it considered water for an atilas yodayim? According to Rabbi Eliezer, yes, this is water for because it's undiluted wine. Is it called embarrassing food? And is it called destructing food? So these are other halachic issues. And he's saying, no, it's not a problem of, dis of embarrassing food, using it for things other than, 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 than eating, because that's not a, he holds that's not an issue. Is it called wasting? Is it, is it considered uh, wasting food? He says that's not an issue. I have no problem with these two issues of ruining food 
And that, the issue of baltashchis, he got, a, got around. The issue of washing one's hands, he got around. And so therefore, Rabbi Eliezer says, this is acceptable. We're now on uh, 13 lines down or 15 lines down from the top of the page. And the rabbis say, Either this way or that way, you can say the bracha bar piyagafen. Uh, you, you could you could do the bracha bar piyagafen. What does this way or that way mean? Whether you diluted it or whether you didn't dilute it, the rabbis say this is called wine, and you cannot use it for nitilas yodayim. Now, if it's called wine, even if it's undiluted, that would mean that. You could say bar piyagafen, diluted or undiluted. That would be the bracha. However, what? let's take that now to the other halachic issue that we're dealing with, and that is the issue of, is this considered water to wash your hands with for netilas yodayim? And the answer to that question is, well, it's wine. It's not water. So according to the rabbis, you can't use it for netilas yodayim. Now, this does not tell us clearly what the rabbis would hold with regard to washing your hands with fruit juice, which could be considered maybe wasteful. We don't know what the rabbis really would hold in that, in that scenario. Would the rabbis allow it? Would that be considered baltashkas? Would that be considered uh, degrading food? Would that be considered ruining food? And th- we don't have clarity on that from the Brisa, but we do know that Rabbi Eliezer has no problem with it. And we do know that the rabbis hold that it is considered wine, even if it's undiluted. So that's the, the way Rashi is learning this tomorrow. Now, as I mentioned, the, the, uh, the Ravid has to learn differently because the Ravid says anything that's discolored, you would not be able to use for um, washing one's hands. And therefore, we can't be talking about washing one's hands for bread. And therefore, the Ravid has to learn the Gemara differently. So if we learn the Gemara according to the Ravid, you have to, we're going to start again and read the Gemara according to the Ravid's way. Tano Rabbanan. So let's start again by the two dots. Tanu Rabbanan, the rabbis learned in a brisa, yayin wine, until you dilute it, you can't recite the bracha bar piyagafen, you'd say the bracha bar piyagafen, and you can use it for washing one's hands for cleanliness, not for the bracha for bread, but you could use it for cleanliness. And, and the... Um, the, the point is that according to Rabbi Eliezer, who we're discussing, that if it's undiluted, you are, number one, wasting, your, number one, using food for non-food purposes, and number two, you are ruining food and destroying it. So Rabbi Eliezer says that this is not a problem. You could do that for your washing, washing your hands for cleanliness. So uh, you, this is this is uh, not wine; it's water. You don't recite the bracha berpia gafen. Rather, you say berpia eats, and you can use it for washing your hands. Misha nasan mayim, but once you dilute it, mevarchan al berpia you you you. Um, you would recite the bracha bar piyagafen and v'ein noitlin mimeno liyodayim, but you can't use it to wash your hands. 